Hello. So in the last uh, video, we looked at ranges of forces. So we already saw one aspect in order to learn about what kind of interaction happens when you when you study um, specific force. You learn about the force carrier from noting the range in which forces interact. In this class, we talk about the case. But in more general terms, when we uh, want to measure properties of forces, we have basically three concepts at hand which can be experimentally determined. The first one is masses of bound states. So you might remember from atomic physics that you learn a lot about the electromagnetic interaction by studying, for example, the hydrogen atom, where you have an electron circling around the proton and you can study in detail um, you know, aspects of the electromagnetic interaction. Um, the second aspect is decay rates of unstable particles or the width of an unstable particle. So in quantum mechanics, the lifetime of the particle is related to the width. And so that's what we're going to discuss in this video. And then lastly, we can look at the reaction rates expressed as cross sections. And that's the topic of the next video after this. So let's talk about decays. Um, so we can define this new symbol, the decay rate lambda, and S as a function of time, the probability that a particle will survive at least until some time t. Um, we can now discuss this and say, okay, you know, the probability at some time t um, relates to the probability at some time t plus delta t by the likelihood one minus the decay rate times the time interval delta t. And so from this we find that the change of the probability for the particle to survive is proportional to that probability and the decay rate. So now if we integrate this, we find that the log of this probability is equal to some constant times lambda decay rate times time. So now if you simply assume that the particle existed at the initial time t, we said with that we said k equal to zero, we find this very famous exponential decay law, e to the power of minus lambda t. And this shown here in this picture as you see this exponential decay. So far, so good. Um, we can now you know, define and look at this distribution a little bit more. Um, we can, for example, look at the average time for a particle or that a particle lives. Um, so this average time tau is simply given by the integral from zero to infinite. So you basically integrate over this distribution to get the average time for the particle. And that's equal to one over the decay rate, one over lambda. So you can do the algebra uh, yourself and try to follow this. Um, so if you now express um, this probability for the particle to survive until some time t, uh, through the lifetime we find this is equal to e to, the, to minus t over the, 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 the lifetime of the particle. So you might not want to look at one particle, but an ensemble of particles, a sum of particles, um, and look at the time dependence of the number of particles which survived. So this is equal to the, the number of particles as a function of time is equal to the initial number of um, particles times the probability that any given particle survives. And that's again given by this exponential here. All right. In nuclear physics, one often talks about the half line, half lifetime of a particle or of a specific nuclei. Um, and that's given, as you would assume, by the time it takes um, for half of the particles to decay. So n of tau one half is equal to the number of initial particles n not over two. And you find then that this half life is, half, half life is related to the lifetime of the particle with a factor of about two thirds. There's, this is, uh, leads to some confusion in numerical values sometimes when, when you ask uh, for specific answers for nuclear and so on, in experiments. <coughs> All right, so there's another aspect of decays which arises, which comes from uh, a fundamental property of quantum mechanics. So if you have an unstable state or any unstable state does not have exact energy state, and this follows um, if you want, from um, the uncertainty principle. So the width of a particle 
is quantized and it's quantized with this thing lambda here. And as you can see, lambda relates again to the decay rate for the lifetime of, of the particle. Another complication can occur when there's multiple rates for the particle to decay. Uh, for example, you know, you have a Higgs boson, as we will see on the next slide, which might decay into multiple, uh, has a way to decay into multiple particles. Here we define a partial width, where uh, the partial width is de defined as the half, uh, the, the, the width of the particle to decay into a specific mode. And then the total width of the particle is given by the sum of the partial widths of all possible ways for the particle to decay. Using this, you can also decay, uh, to calculate the likelihood of a particle to decay in a specific way. Uh, that's called the Branchian fraction. And that's given by the partial width divided by the total width or the partial decay rate divided by the total decay rate. Again, the total has to be one. The probability for the particle to decay in any mode is one. Uh, therefore, the sum of the Branchian ratios is one as well. All right. So looking at a specific example, um, the Higgs boson is probably my famous favorite example in this entire class. Um, you find here, given branch fractions or ratios for specific decay modes, this is not always in which the Higgs boson decay, but the most dominant one. The most prominent one is the one where the Higgs boson decays into a pair of two quarks. Um, you will later see, maybe even as an exercise, uh, why the distribution of uh, branch and ratios is the way it's being shown here. So the Higgs boson has been measured with a mass of 125 GeV in a little bit. And you see at this mass here, the prominent decay mode is into the bar, but it's also possible for the Higgs boson to decay into a pair of W bosons. Uh, we are an interesting loop diagram um, into gluons, even so gluons are massless, or taus, charm, Z bosons, and so on. And we just showed here, showed here in a paper which was submitted today <coughs> to the archive that Higgs boson also can decay into a pair of muons with a branching ratio of 2 times 10 to the minus 4. So it's rather rare, but it's possible. 